why is it that you were able to do on television with so many talented people, talented actors, directors, <laughs> Cecil B. DeMille, Victor Fleming, were, were not able to do in the movies? What were you able to do to make such a successful you know, rendition of, of this, this quintessential Western story? When you're going through hell, you got to keep on moving. There's somebody might realize you're there uh, before the devil knows you're in there. Uh, we didn't have time to worry about whether we were making it definitively because we changed the, the plot of the book completely. We made a leading man out of Trampus and a leading man out of Steve, and those two uh, squirrely desperados were both killed off in the book. I shot Trampus and I hung Steve. So, <laughs> the way the television, the television schedule worked, we made those films in approximately eight days. Most of them took eight days. But you can realize that if you gotta have one every week, you're gonna have to have multiple units. So we had a unit here where Gary would be the starring role. We had a unit over here where Trampus was the starring role. And then we had three over here where I was the starring role. Well, I could only handle the three in one day, and I could have one time I realized that I had been on five sets in a single day. So it was just, it was a show that could not logistically be done. It was 90 minutes, and you couldn't make it. Fortunately, we never got that memo, and we made it anyway. <laughs> So, so, you know, to whatever Jim said, so, <laughs> sounded really good to me. <laughs> oh, wow. I, uh, well, we, he played the Virginian part so fantastically. You, you covered that. They only needed one, uh, they needed uh, a North Carolinian, and that's where I came in. <laughs> I'm not a Justin Bieber, but I did have a guitar and added a little bit of songs and music to the show. And boy, that was that's the most wonderful thing, part of my life, where I got to sing and play my part I did on the Virginian series. It's still a really big part of my life, being with you guys and all the memories from that show and all you people to come and remind us of it and see us when we visit. Thank you all so very much, and I think the Virginian just is a quintessential representation of the American spirit that hold together, you know, yeah. us a really uh, good things. And in conclusion... <laughs> Randy, uh, why do you why do you do why do you say things like that? And then I go, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that, that was my line, you know. I, I don't know. I, uh, isn't it in the script? Here, maybe you remember why. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't have an idea at all. But somebody asked me earlier, um, what is it about the show that? Um, that has you come to events like this? Well, first of all, y'all, because it is y'all who have, including those in the back, <laughs> all of you have, um, have just made it so um, heartrending. I, you know, I, that's, that's the one, Very the two helpful. words that comes up for me. It is, it is incredible. Because Jim and Doug and I, we, we'd have lunch, we'd be sitting on the set waiting for a scene to start, and we talk about, we got great writers, we have some terrific guest stars. I just hope that this makes some kind of an impact. And I'll tell you the kind of impact. It was the last year it was here, and I, I, I told a couple of people this, Last year, I'm sitting there at the table. Uh, I think Ava was with me, but she wasn't at the table at the time. And this young couple came up. They're about 29 or 30. And they had this little eight-year-old girl, you know, the kind of girl that hangs on to daddy's leg. It was like that. 
And um, we just started talking about the show. And at one point, the father turns to the girl and says, honey, this is Mr. Gary Clark. And she kind of looked at me and hit her head and hung on to daddy. And we talked a little bit more about how it was working with Jim and Doug and like that. And then he turned to her and he said, honey, this is Mr. Gary Clark. He plays Steve on The Virginian. Her eyes got as big as saucers. She let go of daddy, ran around the table and gave me the biggest hug. I mean, you know, eight years old and impacted by a show that we did 60 years ago. That's why we like coming to these. Gary, because I had so much energy. <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful singer. She sings like an angel. And some of her songs are really pleasant to listen to. <laughs> However, there's one she sings when she's showing off her energy in the morning. Oh my God. Uh, a lovely number from West Side Story called I Like to Be in America. And, you know, it takes an awful lot of concentration to do 15 or 20 pages a day of dialogue. It took me a while to get to the point where I could do, learn it in half an hour, and I can do that and still could do that. But you've got to have your mind in the right place and your concentration, your focus in the right place. And she would come through in the morning and sing it. Sing it for us, the bird. <laughs> to be in America, everything's free in America. Oh, okay, I love you. I love to be in America. The dialogue would go right out of my head. I'd have to start all over again. That was wonderful. That added a lot to the thing. And of course, I am a very, as anyone will tell you who knows me, I'm a very profane man. In fact, I'm an extremely blasphemous man. I have a vocabulary that is unequaled uh, uh, on land or sea. And I use those words constantly in admonishment to myself for mistakes that I have made, unknowing that I was offending other people. She came up to me about three months into the show and said, Mr. Drury, I don't appreciate that kind of language. I wish you would stop using it. I certainly tried. I certainly tried. Yeah, I'll Thinking about uh, our, our girl, as Doug McClure would say, we went to a show one time and she sang a song for the audience and they just loved her and uh, and I was sitting there and Gary, uh, Doug McClure stood up, James Dury stood up, I was still sitting there wondering what was going on and he said, stand up, that's our girl, that's our girl. <laughs> she was our lady, I tell you. Uh, and, and everybody knew that too, Every, all the visiting actors. And, She still is. Well, as she said, she wasn't all that naive as we thought she was. But, that, but that's neither here nor there. We thought she was. Uh, I want you to tell the story about um, Peter Graves and the and the, uh, the unusual cattle that you saw. Oh, that was that was uh, uh, Steve Forrest. Steve Forrest. Yeah, we were we were out on the back lot, uh, and they were they were herding a bunch of cattle. And I was sitting there talking to Steve Forrest and just talking away and having to look up and I said, look at that tall cow. And then I went back to start talking and his face got scarlet and I had no idea they were mating. <laughs> and flipped me up and I did a backflip and landed on my feet, and the director loved it. Now, when we were re when we were auditioning, 
when I was auditioning for Steve, no other actor who was auditioning for Steve was to be on the set. But Ben Cooper was on the set. And he had a producer that wanted him to do the part of Steve. So they would sit and watch and they'd make comments. And we said, well, he should be off the, and the producer said, no, he's all right, it's okay. And the director said, well, he should, no, he's okay, just go ahead and do the auditions. Okay. So we did all the auditions. And then the director said, all right, every, all the guys who were here for Steve, come on stage and just do whatever you want. So Doug and I, he was doing Trampas, but anyway, there's a couple of Trampases. So we come on and he says, action. And the first thing Ben did is he took out his gun and pointed it at me. And I took my finger and I stuck it in the barrel. <laughs> the director liked that. And while Ben was figuring out how he was going to counter that, Doug found a boa from one of the dance hall girls, hung it on Ben's belt in the back. So Ben was trying to be macho and going around the set with this pink thing hanging from his belt. So the director says, cut. Ben discovers the pink thing on his butt. And he says, no, no, we gotta shoot that all over again. The director says, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> what the part? Cowboys and their jokes, oh boy. Mm. Well, I uh, and I think there were about a hundred other actors that were uh, were seen for the thing and, and, and did screen tests for it. And uh, the only comment that came back after my audition was, you're too fat, lose some weight. So I went and lost about 10 pounds and came back and auditioned again. They said, you're too fat, lose some weight. So in 30 days, I lost 30 pounds. I you know, ate a head of lettuce every day. and ran it off on the Los Angeles River, which is a concrete viaduct. Uh, but I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran and I worked out assiduously twice a day and I finally lost the 30 pounds. There was no comment, but they said on a Friday night before the Monday morning that we started to shoot, they called Doug McClure and myself and said, you have the roles of the Virginian and Trampas. It was nice of them to give us the weekend to prepare. <laughs> That was how that worked for me. I, I wasn't there when the hijinks were going on, so I don't know anything about it. But uh, anyway, that's how it worked for me. Right, and uh, all these girls came up and stood in front of the car, and they wouldn't let the driver go. I mean, they, they were blocking the road. And uh, then they started climbing up into the car, and then they started climbing into the back seat, and they were all hugging me and kissing me. and, and, and uh, so the cop came up to the driver and said, start driving. He said, but all these girls are blocking the car. He said, start driving anyway. And just go low speed. You'll push them out of the way. And so he managed to get me around and get all those girls off of me and everything. And I, I didn't appreciate it so much that time. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, other dangerous things can happen. And we, we do have to watch out for those situations. You know? Oh, I just have kind of a funny story about fans. I was doing a festival back at, um, I think it was Gene Autry, Oklahoma, and Bob Fuller was there and Peter Brown, who has since passed away, but he was there, and I was there, and another actress, I can't re quite remember her name, but we were sitting in this little room with this, I had all my pictures out on the table, this lady walks by, never looks at me, she says, my, my, how we do change. <laughs> girl and I said it's me she goes yeah and I, <laughs> I thought I met a little bit my lady was so cute about it but anyway you, you can't have an ego and do this so <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs>